Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links down below so you can get discounts on different car mods and products. Alright, let's get into the drive. Hello and welcome! Today we are driving a 2019 Ford Ranger Lariat. This is a Super Crew 4x4 model. I would like to thank Flood Ford in East Greenwich, Rhode Island for allowing me to drive and review this vehicle. Make sure to check out my in-depth review previously uploaded on my channel. Their link is also down below. This 2019 Ford Ranger is powered by a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine, producing 270 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. This is mated with a 10-speed shiftable automatic, the GM and Ford co-developed one. This does have an 18-gallon fuel tank and achieves 20 miles per gallon, city and 24 on the highway. This rides on some 18-inch alloy wheels, and it does have a 7,500-pound towing capacity with an 1860 pound payload. All right, let's get this out on the road. So this does have a traditional shifter, and additionally, it does have a manual handbrake, which is nice. And I'm pretty sure that is due to the fact that this uh, may be sold as a manual in other markets. So this does have the 10 speed. So it may get, uh, may get pretty busy with shifting, but we shall see. As for my very initial impressions, this uh, so far is pretty easy and manageable to drive. It is a truck, but it's a, a smaller truck than the F-150. Has a pretty deep brake pedal, very easy to control. I like it. As for the seats themselves, this is a black leather interior and it does have uh, both heated front and it does have both driver and passenger heated front seats. They have three levels to them, which is nice. This does also come with blind spot monitoring. For visibility, this is a truck, so it is uh, very good with visibility right now. Very boxy, very easy to see out of. And this does come with Ford Sync 3 uh, infotainment system, which is a very nice system to use. Very intuitive, very quick, and very simple. All right, so currently it keeps the revs very low, which is of course expected. This does have a sport mode where we can pick the gears. It does have the shiftable option just on the gear lever right there. And that did just do auto stop start. I deactivated it because I personally can't stand auto stop start. That's just me. I just think it causes excessive wear on an engine where it's not needed, so why? This does have about 27,000 miles right now, and it does sticker for around $39,000. This is a Lariat, which is the top trim. The base is XL and the mid trim is XLT. There's also an extended cab version where it has a smaller back seat with just the one-way open doors. But uh, this is, I think, the preferred option. If you're gonna use this as like a family vehicle or just to have any amount of usable space, I think it's better. For the steering wheel, it is uh, no shift paddles, of course. Those are located on the shift lever. But uh, overall, it's a nice wheel. Very meaty, nice uh, bolstering at 10 and 2, and it is leather wrapped. You do get an auto dimming mirror. You do not get a sunroof in here though. From my initial impressions, uh, it's pretty quiet in here. Tire noise is uh, very subdued and wind noise is very quiet as well. You do get a mix of an analog and a digital gauge cluster down below. So the center, as you can see, is gonna be analog showing my speedo, but I can set that to be digital also if I wanted to where the uh, tachometer currently is. On the right, you also do get navigation or media to show right there. And we will do a little highway entry here and see how that does. That absorbed the bump pretty well. All right, so as for body roll, yeah, it's definitely got body roll. It's not unbearable though. Yeah, it's really okay so far with body roll. It doesn't drive like a, an old truck, like, you know, crashing you everywhere and wanting to tip you or feel like it wants to tip you everywhere you go. It's not like that at all. And of course there's massive construction here. So I will see you in just a moment. And let's stomp on it. All 
right, so it really doesn't sound all that bad. It uh, sounds like a very powerful fan though. The turbo, uh, turbo noise is very apparent. Not like a nice turbo whistle, just like a massive fan sound. So it's a bit of a loud engine, but um, it doesn't sound the worst. It's actually the same engine as in the EcoBoost Mustang, this 2.3, but uh, in the Mustang, it produces a bit, a bit more power actually. So uh, it's definitely tuned differently. But cruising about 70, 75 right now. Uh, wind noise definitely picks up a lot. Tire noise is still pretty good, but uh, yeah, you get a good bit of wind noise out of this. So it's a bit unfortunate. It takes a while to kick up. It does have 10 gears it's playing with. So uh, if I were to put it in sport mode, it would probably shift around a good bit differently. Does have blind spot monitoring, of course, so that's nice to have. It feels pretty stable and planted though. However, one thing I noticed with this transmission, whenever I go on and off the brake at all, excuse me, whenever I go on and off the gas pedal at all, it really tugs you forward and back. Like it, you're like moving forward and back like this, even just with slight touch on and off. Like if you're going da 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 with the gas, it's kind of a pain. It feels a very tuggy on and off like that. I don't really like that so much. Wind noise quiets down once you drop to about 50. But uh, yeah, above 50, it is a moderately loud truck to drive. Brake pedal feels very good though. Potty roll is once again moderately limited, so that's good. Let's put in sport, see if it shifts any differently. Yeah, it kicks it up a gear or two. Yeah, so I don't know how well you can hear that, but on my right side, it just sounds like a fan has been activated, even though it's not the air conditioning. It, it uh, You can hear the turbo, it just sounds like uh, you have more fans in here than you even once did, so that's a little interesting. That's just the EcoBoost sound. As for braking feel, though, it's very confidence-inspiring. It's really, uh, doesn't feel like you're driving a truck, not in the ways of, like, an old truck, anyway. For the steering feel, it's actually pretty light, very light, so it, uh, it's very forgiving to drive in that sense. And let's just turn around here and we'll do a little bit of an acceleration. I don't know if we'll do a zero to 60 quite yet, but we will do moderately hard acceleration. It's the backup camera. It is pretty low quality. That's not just a Ford thing. Many cars are like that. It does have moving tracking lines though, which is nice. Let's see. So not zero to 60, but let's see. Floor it. Yeah, that fan noise. And 60. Okay. It's really not that bad, but it just, uh, I don't know why that turbo noise is so darn intrusive. It's interesting. For the ride, uh, going over some bumps, it's actually pretty forgiving, so they tuned it relatively soft. It's not overly stiff, like, uh, it doesn't need to be so stiff because with a larger truck, you need uh, a tighter suspension so as to prevent body roll to the point of possible tipping. But um, yeah, in this truck, it's it's soft enough that it's uh, pretty pleasant to drive. Not bad. This is the only engine offered in the Ranger, the 2.3 EcoBoost. So in the US, there is no V6 Ranger. Whereas in the Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon, it's competitors. There are uh, both V6 models and a turbo diesel model. I don't know if there's actually a four cylinder version of those two, but in here you only get the turbo four. However, it can tow up to 7,500 pounds, which is very impressive when you put it next to the turbo diesels from GMC and Chevy, because those vehicles with that engine can only tow 7,700 pounds, 200 pounds more total than a gas turbo four. So Ford really, uh, really came to play with that. So. That is very nice to have such a great towing capacity, especially as this is the only engine, you don't really <laughs> want to have a just a moderate towing capacity. Yeah, so day to day, this is the transmission is very active. I know it's going to be with it being 10 speeds, but I don't really like the tug. Like uh, when I'm on and off the gas pedal, it's just very tuggy. That's just my observance, but uh, it's a bit annoying. However, once you're at higher speeds, it stays very stable within whatever gear it's in. Let's put it in sport, play with the gears ourselves. That's three, two. Okay, it's very, very slow to respond right there. But once again, that's expected. 
So yeah, the shifting, I, I understand why they didn't put paddles in this. It's not meant to be uh, shifting quickly in this car. In the EcoBoost though, I, I believe it has paddles and they would be tuned to uh, respond a lot quicker. And for the audio system in here, you do get a B&O audio system. So you can check out an audio test at the end of my previous review on this truck on my channel. For the main interior in here, on the door panel, it, uh, it definitely has some uh, hard plastics running throughout a lot of it, but through the rest of the interior, although it's a lot of hard plastic, it's, uh, it's not overly bland. It has a nice uh, contrast stitching with soft touch material running through, the, running through the entire dashboard, and that adds some upscale looks and class to it. Additionally, the power mirrors in here are power folding, which is cool. So you can push one button over on the left there, and you will be able to power fold in both mirrors at once. And back out, of course, with pushing it back out. So that's a very cool feature I have. It's not even present in too many uh, like entry-level luxury cars. I don't see all that many power folding mirrors, so it's cool to see it in a Ford Ranger. As for my final thoughts on this Ford Ranger, I think it's uh, pretty fun to drive for a, a mid-sized truck that it is. Uh, body roll is, is not too bad. It's as expected. A little, uh, a little better than I was expecting even. Uh, as for the 10 speed, I don't know if I really love the 10 speed that much. It's a good transmission, but it's just very fussy. Uh, it's always going to be, it has 10 speeds, but uh, I kind of wish they had put something a little different in here. But it does keep it very economical for what it is, so that is nice. And additionally, I wish it had a four wheel drive auto mode. It only has four high or four low, as well as two wheel drive. And the interior has a few more hard plastics than I was hoping for, at least throughout the door panel. But for, uh, for the price, I think the Ranger's return to the US has been uh, pretty successful. They like Stamping Ranger and Lariat all over this, so it's, uh, it's apparent that Ford is happy with their decision to be able to bring it back. And I think consumers like it as well. It has the good technology that it needs, similar to an F-150. Uh, it handles pretty well, it's a manageable size, and it comes with definitely enough room if you were to use it as a family car. My only other main gripe is just uh, how tuggy the transmission is, uh, just when you're going on and off the gas pedal at all. But overall, I think it's uh, not bad to drive. Has a pretty good ride, uh, decent enough handling, and steering is very light and forgiving, so that's very good. All right, that'll just about wrap up my drive of this 2019 Ford Ranger Lariat. Make sure to check out Flood Ford in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and their link is down below. Thank you very much to them for allowing me to both review and drive this vehicle. And be sure to check out my in-depth review going through all the features and stats of this car currently out on the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.